All right, beautiful. A little tune in together, some deep breaths. Hmm. Just relaxing any tension away. And just tuning into our highest selves. And interacting with each other from that space. From the space of Shambhala, the spiritual kingdoms on earth already being done. And from the heart, from unity, from love, from play. Ready, Zamir? I'm still ready. Cool. It's exciting. <laughs> <laughs> oh man so welcome everyone welcome everybody yeah this is um gonna be an exciting conversation um because we're shooting this podcast for both myself and atlas's podcast individually but we're doing it all in one episode and um which is in itself unique i love that <laughs> it's so yeah. cool and it's nice because when you do that, you have simulation and you have insights and you have the unique audiences on both channels, the unique like essence of both channels. So you and I will have like different angles that we sort of take on our channels yeah. and that's that's exciting and then there'll be some cross pollination so people visiting insights from simulation people from insights vis visiting simulation people from simulation mm -hmm. visiting insights <laughs> yeah yeah so zamir will you angle your camera a little bit down so you're more yes. like me in the frame there we go yeah. thank nice. you yeah, yeah. Nice. that looks great i look like a floating head yeah <laughs> <laughs> nice man um yeah so we were talking about a little bit, I guess, before. Well, first of all, actually, I want to address what you just said, because I, I do. I think that's like the whole intention of insights is that cross not only cross pollination, but also like this, the shining of light. Like, so I spent a lot of my years as a recording artist and the light was always on me. Right. Like I was this spotlight kind of like at least from my end of the um, or my uh, perception, it was like always. Okay, well, how, you know, being interviewed. Um, and so this for me is kind of new um, in terms of podcasting and interviewing other people and spotlighting them, but it's it's from such a different place than where, where music was, first of all. But um, it's very, very cool in terms of just having conversation for the sake of conversation and selflessly sharing stories. Like I think selflessly uh, sharing people's stories um, to, to like, really like I, what I find is I have such amazing conversations with people and they enlighten me, you know, like they're enlightening conversations. And like, if, if that can be shared with the world and there's some sort of platform that can just be built for that. And that's, that, that's really my, um my intention with insights is like to give an insight into it's i i, I call it um a illuminate or it's like shining light on the illuminated ones or nice. like illuminating the illuminated yeah. ones which yeah is, yeah i heard that in the intro in your animation intro and your voiceover just for that to become the norm and specifically shining the light on the illumined ones and i feel like it would be important to share what we mean by that and mm -hmm. from my perspective we mean 
those that have found out who they are mm. and what they are and yes. then feel the peace and happiness that comes from that realization which is like the sun and illumines and then they share that with all of creation emanate that and they basically serve the rest of creation shifting more and more into the sun themselves basically unblocking any clouds nailed it yeah nailed it nailed it um the sun is such a big part of my uh i would say just my journey in general it's been very uh like it's been a metaphor that's been since the beginning of my that's been relevant for me so that was perfect i love that mm -hmm. nice yeah and that's and that's been across all of the mystic traditions it's important to mention because this is thou this is thousands of years old what we're talking about it's across all of the different traditions mystic traditions around the planet so each religion basically has a mystic tradition that's about uniting with God within. Mm. And they just that in itself is answering the question, who am I and what is I and what is my true nature and just doing that investigation mm. is like what they say in the traditions just cutting through any clouds or any of these onion layers that we've built up of separation or lack um is traditionally called ego or if you really want to get metaphysical location um so any sense of being located in the body, any sense of being your thoughts, any sense of being separate, really, from creation, from others, cre generates this dis-ease. And then it's aimed to be remedied through all of creation's goodies. Like, yeah, yeah. so then I'll go buy something and that'll make me happy or I'll have a relationship that'll fulfill me, that'll bring me peace or um, mm -hmm. I'll have some substances and that'll bring me peace. Um, and it's all just trying to heal the dis-ease of separation, of lack. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's the main pattern. And that's why the mystic traditions just aim to point you directly inward, the direct path inward, M mysticism, uniting with God within. And then in that process, you discover who and what you are. And then you feel the peace and happiness that is innate in that. And, um, and then you radiate, you illumine, and it's just yeah, it's just way less, yeah, consumy and graspy, and it's way more uh, generous, serving, illuminating. Yeah, yeah. And you can feel that. You can feel that from um, from people. Is what I've found is especially, you know, you and I are in NLS, and um, no limit society. That, no limit <laughs> society. Yeah, um, and. And we'll get into that, I think. Um, that's gonna be a big part of this conversation. Um, but I feel what I what I've noticed is interacting with people um within NLS, it doesn't matter what stage of the journey that they're at, the fact that they're there and showing up for themselves in that way, it creates an automatic respect, like an automatic level of respect. And and when I see it, it's like it it's um and get to interact with it and you know like talking with you i got to speak with Corey on the previous one um and then like even off the interview screen off insights um just 
you can when i think illumined ones i think like it, it's a spectrum like yeah we could talk about enlightenment and we could say that it's like this you know like it, like an enlightened being an illumined one but for me it's like this spectrum of of um those who are like willing to go the distance you know that's really that's really it. and when i see that quality it's like i want to highlight that persona because <laughs> There's somebody on that wherever they are. It doesn't matter where the fuck they are. Excuse me. I don't know if we can curse on the. Of course, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, and so it doesn't matter where they are at all. And for me to even try to put a placement on that in itself is, you know, that that would be inaccurate. Anyways, it'd be a fallacy. So, um, yeah. But I I find that there is is going to be resonant gain as much as I do from every conversation because I'm starting to view actually for the last four or five months of my life every every interaction has become um a teaching moment you know like I learn in every interaction so like every individual is my teacher is is what I'm seeing and it's like dude like get this out to the world like people need that you know like people it's just to absorb the energy and the perspective like two people having a conversation like you and I and just to like see that a mechanism in itself that energy is going to carry over and people are going to have some sort of an experience what that's going to be that's you know up to source so let that play out mm -hmm. and that also plays into the simultaneity of things where you have um, always already free being now and also at the same time there being an appearance like you said of different levels or different stages just like us 10 years ago versus now um and anytime you meet someone in nls you have this auto respect for them because they're in the process of fully getting through any lack any separation any limiting beliefs and just coming from the same place that bentinho comes from that the team comes from and that um is aligned most first foremost with the mission, which is igniting global awakening. And the proliferation of the frequency of Shambhala, which is spiritual kingdoms across the entire planet, where all basic needs are met, where all potential is being fully actualized. And yeah where all are awake, where all are playing, where all are creating, generating um, prosperity and energy and luc lucrative abundance in finance and in, um, in, in food and in water. And it's just so uh, technology. It's just so everyone feels this in the deepest of their hearts in the collective, which is that. It's that. It's what they know is possible, heaven on earth. But that, oh. yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's what yes. we're aligned with. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Uh, I want to dive into that. It felt like the word that popped to me is the word just possibility in general. It's it's such an elementary word, but it's such a also like it, it's it's a hidden gem. I feel like in any seeking totally. structure, um, where it's like coming from possibility is the key to everything it's the key to unlocking you know this any anything that's locked i guess you could say even um it's so cool yeah that's that's that, that felt really good yeah so it's like um there's there's something that that came up for me recently in terms of like well recently being like six months ago maybe a year ago um but the idea of optimism um, versus someone who considers themselves a realist, right? And what I found is like, well, most most people, and I don't want to, you know, could be generalizing here, but most people, I'd say, it's safe to say, when they hear the word realist, they're talking about what is currently appearing in their reality, right? And what they perceive to be like, like this is real, uh, like you know, physical objects and things like that, um, and so not even being aware of the metaphysical aspects that can create and shift, you know, like just through a state change, just through, you know, going in and again, like becoming acquainted with who you are. Um, 
so you take that word realist and you're you're now you know you're i'm a realist like i i go based off of what is appearing to me is essentially what, what you're saying is like or is essentially what someone is saying and then optimism to me is like i i go based off of what is unseen or solution-based thinking I, I look at it as um or, or seeking seeking possibilities in every single situation and what i find is on this path that i'm on the the <laughs> the depth of possibility gets exponentially wider every day and like you know like the depth of what is possible becomes just um you know in, more instantly available and it's just wider like the scope of what you could see is possible and how you can actually metaphysically tune into it and create from the uncreated to bring that into creation that becomes possibility and point and you're not um <laughs> like that's my reality you know what i mean like that's realism to me now it's like yeah of course you can you can create from the uncreated and of course you can bring it you know um so it's so cool to have like NL without NLS, that wouldn't be as a, um, for me, I, I would say NLS has fast tracked me in my, in my faith and conviction in that. Um, and, and also just, um, opening up to others. Cause I've always been like a kind of in my, as Ben would say, stinky little pond. I was the, the self seeker, you know, like to myself kind of doing my own thing. Um, and doing group work didn't really, um didn't really resonate with me for a long time and i think coming into nls it was like the first things that came up was just all of this fucking fear you know about you know like yeah i'm great in the in, in the i guess you could say 3d world like i can you know put me in a room with um rappers you can put me in a room with businessmen you can put me in a room and i you know i thrive it doesn't matter who's in the room. I, I'm very adaptable. But then, you know, put me in a room full of people who who also know themselves. It's like the standard gets raised. So yeah, like it better, even, it's beautiful, though, because yeah, like that that gave me so much um, like just seeing it, seeing the example of it gave me so much like will to to do the same for myself, like show up for yourself, damn it, you know, like this is what you want anyway. So like show up for yourself. Let's do this, you know? And that's the energy that I get with NLS. It's just like, it's this constant, like this loving, nurturing um, guidance to like, there's nothing that you could do that is more embarrassing than anyone else here has ever done or been in person. So like, let that go and just be like, allow yourself to be And And this, it's such a great, environment for that i can't i can't speak um good enough things about nls so um, nice. i know i went on a few different directions there. yeah, but hopefully it all, yeah. so many good threads came up um yeah yeah one of them was that okay so you spoke of the shift from objective to subjective so to possibility so we have this obsession or this focus on the object and one could say that um, the entire spiritual journey basically begins with shifting from focus or attention or perception on the object to like the very line of perception itself and then to the very subject or the perceiver so nice that that is sort of like the main part you could say of of the initial part of the spiritual journey is that um mm -hmm. and then when you shift to the subject um and you recognize that um the subject is actually um the one infinite creator it's actually god <laughs> and that's the same thing that's looking out of your eyes and out yeah. of everyone's eyes and so then you realize that there's like an eternity or an infinity to your beingness 
and that you can sort of relax your obsession with being the body and relax your obsession with being the thoughts and relax your obsession with objects and focus more on the possibilities, like you said. And nice. this is what I wrote in High Level Perception, that first book that I wrote that you're checking out. And chapter two is called Seed Love Theory. It. Yeah. And so in Seed Theory, you have basically a analogy that you're drawing between the tree of possibility from the seed and all of the possibilities that branch hey one sec actually atlas i don't mean to cut you off but i think it would be powerful if you shared screen if you have it pulled up there you could share screen and you can click on it because i see the illustration that you're talking about in front of me or if you make me a co-host i can share my screen for you i think showing them I just love how on point you are because uh, that's going to make it so much better for sure. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Boom. Sweet. So that's chapter four. Go to chapter two. Okay. Oh, you're right. That is chapter four. Okay. See theory right here. Well, it's like a map. Nice. Sweet. So. Um, okay, so if, if you tune into possibilities above everything, and you recognize that everything that's objective is downstream of what is subjective of what is the focus or the imagination or the will or the creativity of God of the one infinite creator. So then you feel more and more, okay, so why don't I tune into that seed level, the possibility space, and I make this analogy with the tree, and I see that out of all of my like possible trajectories in life, that I can persistently, constantly focus on and choose my preferred state and my preferred frequency, which is oneness shambhala service coming from there and also mm. seeing in that north star position igniting global awakening the mission architecting shambhalas across the planet and nothing being higher than that and so then your all of your focus in imagination is on that and as god as the one infinite creator with the stylus painting and so then guess what happens is within five years, 10 years, 15 years, this entire planet is saturated with spiritual kingdoms. And then guess what happens is somebody 15 years later turns and asks themselves, hey, how did this all happen? How did the subject or the imagination become object of Shambhala's across earth? And this yeah. is how it happened because we focused on the possibility space. We focused on the root, the root or the substratum is the fact that you are God, you are the one infinite creator, you have the fucking stylus in your imagination. And so we manifest the external. And so um, focusing on the possibility space is so critical and also focusing simultaneously on the seed level of basic needs being met is what enables people from around the world to be able to have clean drinking water and have food and have shelter and not have dis diseases and just have energy and abundance so that they themselves can also turn inward and ask themselves the question, who am I? What is I? What is my nature? And also get through any layers of separation or lack or location or these types of things. And then it becomes easier for us to prosper as a planet. So the basic needs, which you could say are the physicality, actually fuel the subjective as well. So they're in a feedback loop with each other, the subjective right. and the objective. So that's why it's so important to have the simultaneity of both. Yes. Yeah, totally. I totally agree. And it's funny, uh, I think um, during a session before that Ben had, uh, you'd mentioned the simultaneity. And it, it, I remember even just how much joy was in your voice and you're like dude i just love you man just the simultaneity thing is what keeps me and i 
<laughs> I felt that I felt that like like deeply too because that that's um that's something that I that I you know I notice I especially it, it's been a, it's been a um kind of front and center factor for me in my seeking as well it's the simultaneity of like cuz cuz the moment that we create separation we are outside of the realms of the whole in terms of or within it creating the illusion of being outside of the you know the the whole so it's uh it's it's cool though it's nice when you notice that because then you realize that you can't really ever be alone or like you never are separate um when you do get that outer outer layer look at your the macro lens look at look at what's actually going on when we create separation um so i, I it's really cool it sucks when you're inside of it but it's really cool when you're on the outside of it and you're like, ah, I see what I did there. Yeah. That's, that's clever. Yeah. <laughs> and we could even say that the whole game is played there. Um, do we right. feel like, mm. do we feel like it's cool to end the screen share for now? Or do you feel like you want to bring something up? Yeah. Let's yeah. Okay, cool. Well, actually, you know, you know what, real quick, uh, because I do like what you did here. I did a, a video um i think on my youtube and it was it was something along the lines of a linear explanation of um of timelines yeah and and this feels a lot like that what i did but just in a lot more detail i drew it out like little like just points and then high vibration was here and low, lower vibrational yes. dots are here and then yes, they fork bro. off with every decision that you make in one direction or another and just because you go super, you know, deep into a lower, you know, vibrational thought or whatever. It doesn't mean that you can't at any given point make a decision that will, you know, even just vertically shoot you directly up. That happens, too. So it's like I, I love this. I love this because you gave you gave really good examples, alcohol and cannabis abuse. And then like what that's pretty like that's pretty neutral. It's like coasting to fill this void and then marry like very average, marry an average partner. But then you could see at some point, you know, the alcohol and cannabis abuse, like that could have led at some point to gang involvement or it could have led to a, j a jail sentence. And then, you know, and then overdose at 27 at a club like I, I to me, that's that's such a um, it's such it's real, you know, in terms of like what's what what um, can can happen now. But like the th the cool thing is, is like what we, what we perceive as like, you know, lower vibration, higher vibration, uh, I would say in the earlier states of seeking and sometimes still even well, actually even now, like that, that there is th there can be that illusion of that lower frequency um, being worse because you feel constricted or being worse, right? Like worse or better because you feel constricted, but really in the macro lens, like all of this is of the same nature, you know, like this, uh, the jail sentence and get, like that is a valuable lesson for a soul. It's a super valuable lesson for a soul. And then, you know, then you go up here, company founder, investor, mentor, like that feels great but in relation to what our society has viewed as success, you know, and so it's it's really cool. I, I don't know. I love this so much. I hope that people take time to actually just like really dissect what you did here because it's it's really cool. I got it immediately the second I saw it. it was yeah, like, ah. yeah. It's it, it's so relatable because we see the tree and we see the branches and we see our mm -hmm. own possibility space very much like this with a with a fork point and a decision. And then are we going in the direction? of our our highest possibility or are we going in a direction of a more medium or a lower possibility and we feel this all the time and uh and like you said you've done videos explaining timelines explaining this style of you could also call this like choice architecture um in in computer nice. science in computer science called decision trees and so you're, it's just so relatable across so many different facets of, of, of creation. And it's, um, and that's why you can capture it right away for those that have even like lightly, um, light, like lightly began exploring it. It's just so relatable. Um, so yeah, I feel like uh, I, I, have, I have one, I have a thread from a little bit ago, but do you want to, do you have another thing you want to mention about it? I did have one last thing yeah, go for was, it. that just kind of popped in, which was it, it's really 
it's it's really interesting because at any given point you know you, you go through awakening here and it might it might be like a really traumatic one and then you go into a wake like you're i like this upline that went directly up here i'm not sure if it went up or down but involvement in data mm -hmm. scandal and then so there's a triangle here but anyways so like at any given point so like this is very linear right what we're sh what we're seeing here but then also at any given point there is that like simul simultaneously right there can be that spontaneous awakening that happens where you just disappear from this spot and you appear right here. Your new stance is just automatically here because something significant shifted internally, something significant enough shifted internally where that, that, that reality no longer can exist in your uh, experience. So that was the only thing that I wanted to add is like, while it's linear, there's also this, like this uh, property of it, the, the potential of it being the you know. quantum leapiness of yes it. Yeah. yeah nailed it yeah for sure Thank yeah you. like where you can just like dissolve as air for a second and then just like pop into another area yeah yeah it's and 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 with no real explanation and that's where you know you might have some law of confusion come in and you know because there's dissonance between the old reality and the new reality and all that yeah so Mm -hmm. Yeah, super. That's currently what I'm experiencing. But go ahead. You had a you had a thread actually that you were going to go on, and then maybe we could shift into personal experience. Perfect. So, what came up earlier was where the entire game of Source or the One Infinite Creator is being played, and you could say that the entire game is being played at the event horizon and so where the sense of self even arises in the first place is where the game is being played so if you're feeling a sense of being located in the body and being contracted with your thoughts and with separation that the shift is more and more out of your obsession with the stars and the planets and the relationships between them. And it's more and more closer to the event horizon, which is at the center of the galaxy, which is disappearing into the singularity. Wow. And from the singularity, then you can emerge as a full shepherd as as completely pure mm. and you'll and you'll continue purifying of course but that the the shift is really to like seeing these analogies like you're you know the very the very eye itself is a microcosm of the macrocosm of a galaxy mm -hmm. right and so yeah so the patterns are everywhere it's so fractal it's recursive and the patterns are everywhere and it's up to us to like tune in to those patterns and wonder like might it be that all i have to do is understand the nature of black holes and the nature of that being a singularity and the nature of them both, which is a recent finding, which I think is fascinating, that black holes are not only uh, consumers or uh, taking in the light. Transmitters as well, right? They're also creating. They're also creating stars and light. And so, oh. so the, the, very, the very fact that, um, that you have a sort of like an indescribable mystery that is like uh both like like both generating like infinite like actualizing infinite potential in the form of like stars and planets and explorations but at the same time it's understanding itself through these mind body spirit complexes through the through this this um like indescribable like power to know which is uh like it's yeah you can't even describe what's happening like neuronally uh at the heart level and the gut level and how all of these 
you know, 30 trillion cells are undergoing some sort of a comprehension process on behalf of that infinite mystery that we are. Wow. And so, yeah. so you're just these patterns and the whole game is played right here. Like if you can just tune into this, you can, you can like recognize it, you can realize it, you can um, experience it more and more in your moment to moment breathing and, and you'll be it more and more at the level mm -hmm. of your frequency of the level of your vibration. And then you have this conviction that sets in and all of these. And then this, the, the further and further purification of where you're coming from in service and, and to the rest of your self awakening. And, and if you just stay at that like source point, you can feel when you deviate a little bit into separation or into your uh, persona, your ego, your costume, your identity, your self image, you wanting to extract from the conversations and the environment and get validation and try and get some peace and happiness from outside and have an argument with somebody because you don't recognize them as yourself as well. And so if you just play the whole game at that source point, at that event horizon, you can see like Buddha called it dependent origination. Like the whole game is played right there. And you just mm. fork from dependent origination. The first link is you're either avidya or vidya. You're either ignorant or you have knowledge from that source mm. point, from that very, because everything's intertwined in its expression from that point. And that's, right. what's, and that's what you could say is the, the sticker paper knowledge mm -hmm. and the sticker on the sticker paper which is which is ignorance but um th that duality's collapsed and whatnot as well but there's a simultaneity that's really important to recognize there which is that from that point if i just really clearly and vigilantly know myself and just watch the way i express i can tell when i'm expressing from the place of complete unity like Zamir and Atlas are one with itself. It's just truth with itself or reality with itself, love with itself. Um, and less so, oh, it's a separate character called Atlas and a separate character called Zamir. And that's two separate people are having a conversation. And so, yeah, that's like the shift. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this And um, I remember... I think uh, it was in the free online enlightenment training that Ben did, I believe, um, where he described, you know, the tablecloth talking to itself, which is what I believe you're pointing to right now, which is, Ooh. I love that. I love that analogy. Yeah, it's super cool. Um, I had a really cool, actually, experience um, I when I... Oh, Zamir, I, I, I just noticed yeah. I, have, I have a Kleenex, so we could... We could even like, <laughs> we could even show it to yeah yeah like this to make puppets yeah like yeah like this basically talking to itself nice you have one too yeah, yeah. exactly yeah. <laughs> points in the tablecloth talking to itself so that's cool. actually yeah so so the idea is maybe we should clarify a little bit because we know what we're talking about but maybe mm -hmm. they don't but the idea is this is that you know all of creation is let's say this this white. Uh, piece of paper and that all the little you know individuations me and atlas let's say are um having a conversation right now and we could say that we're two separate beings that you guys can see are clearly not connected at the hip physically or anything like that but you know on a on a metaphysical level what it is is just source creation talking to itself as the tablecloth and it's a yeah <laughs> This is going to be really funny. I love this. this. Uh, so yeah. cute. Yeah, it is. <laughs> um, and I had I, I the other thread that I wanted to follow with you. Um, I like I like the word thread, by the way. I really love that. Yeah. Um, that that you mentioned that. Because it's know, like it's... also the branch. I just want to say like in the tree. Nice. nice. Yeah. Okay. Keep yeah. Going. Yeah. Yeah. Very uh -huh. cool. <laughs> so it's like. Um, that that black hole which is which is creating and it's also destroying at the same time essentially and you could say or, comprehending is another way to say it also which is ooh, I, yeah. oh, I love that yeah. i love that so creating much creating and comprehending 
yeah yeah that's even more be- and that's actually that's actually what's what's more accurately happening in that um scenario so i like that um because destroying sounds really you know it's messy and can have connotations to it so um I had a very interesting experience. I've only sat with Aya once, um, ayahuasca once before plant medicine. And because that was never really a, a heavy part of my journey, but I did it. Um, I did, I did feel called to it. I had, you know, I was invited about three times, the first two times it didn't work out. And then the third time they say, you know, like sometimes it'll just enter your life and it's, it's meant to be when it happens. So um, I listened to that, that uh, piece of, um, that permission slip, I guess you could say. And, and so when I, when I received that and I it went to sit the first night, I didn't have any experience at all. I was trying to have an experience. Like I was really wanting to, um, cause everyone sitting in the circle was having their own experiences. Never hear like make myself up. I just, I felt like I wanted to, but anyways. so it wouldn't happen. Nothing happened. Second night, um, I had, I had a really great facilitator who I want to shout out on this. Actually, his name is Bearheart. Saputo and um, incredible, incredibly integral. Um, I, I I don't even know what to call him because he's he, uh, he could be a shaman, medicine man, but he's far more than that. I don't want to put him in a box. So just a really, really awesome person who I will have on this podcast as well. Um, we actually have already started talking about it, but so we're we're sitting there and he goes, you know, in, in most traditional circles, they're going to tell you don't disrupt the circle too much, you know, try to stay within this box, but he holds this space where it's like, there is no limit, no limit. Like if you, he's like, give, like, if you feel the laughs coming, like give it all you got, like this, you have this moment to, to embrace your healing in that moment, like go for it. And I knew <laughs> going into this, and I don't want to talk too much about the specifics because that can dilute the actual experience that was shown um and kind of water it down but what i do want to say was i did have this this experience during it where i felt like my body was kind of in half and i felt like a black hole where one half was just continuously like it i was at that point that you were talking about just that and and i was i felt trapped there the whole time i didn't like <laughs> it you know like i didn't like it but but it was like <laughs> eventually I surrendered, you know, like I surrendered. So I had a really blissful experience and I was laughing my way through it. And, and, and I was simultaneously purging like crazy, but I was laughing as I was purging and, and just having this really blissful experience that was just like, everything became so comical. Like, and, and I discovered a laugh actually that I had that I'd never let out in my life. And this laugh came out of me. <laughs> and my my friend um drew was there and his partner uh is now is now um mother of his child um congrats to you guys as well if you're watching this um they they she goes oh my god i remember hearing her as i'm like face in a bucket laughing my laughing like and i'm like oh we're dancing right now <laughs> you know like i'm i'm going through it and <laughs> she goes I've literally never heard that sound come out of a human being before that, that I made, that I was making it. It was like, it was deep, man, because like, it was, it was coming from an uncreated space is what it felt like. Like this was coming straight from uncreation into creation. And there was, there was a birth happening and it was so beautiful. So experiencing that physically in your body. Yes there's you know there was it was induced right but there was something that can't be unfelt about that that when when you're there and now i can resonate with what you're saying just going there without any medicine and i can go there into a meditative state and experience kind of the same thing it's definitely not the same thing but it's the the essence of it is there and it's so cool man i i um so yeah i just wanted that felt fun to share so there was no real purpose but yeah it's deep, deep uh, purpose because entheogens mean unleashing God or the divine within. And so mm-hmm. when you when we play with entheogens, they're serving our journey of healing, 
transmuting any of the layers of separation and and lack and uh, location that we've built up the conditioning. Nice. And so they're they're helping us shred all of those. And then the thing is, is to not just take the gondola ride of the entheogen mm. and then go right back down, but it's to have a practice at the same time where you can, like you said, basically revisit through your own just meditation, concentration, realization, abiding, recognition of yourself as the absolute, and just doing that in five minutes a day, 10 minutes a day at the beginning of the day, just relaxed and just breathing and just meditating on that. And there you go. It's, it's yeah, purpose, yeah. purposefully there. Like we, we created nice. all of the entheogens for our own awakening process. And you, we could even go and say that um, the, the stoned ape hypothesis which is, which is how, in many ways why we're here, is that we millions of years ago discovered magic mushrooms and that we, by eating those, created higher cognitive ability to do things like vibrate these vocal cords into some sort of symbol, symbology and meaning that would then be comprehended by the other MBS, mind, body, spirit complex entity. And then we would take over a whole planet and build <laughs> civilization and rockets and, and spaceships and energetic abundance and all these things that are emerging. Um, so we're an extension of fungi on a physical level. <laughs> this is a very, this is a very, very nice. important point um, that, yeah. that this is so important. Um, and I, I kind of want to get the exact um, number, and I think I have the exact number, but I'm just going to double check, and I'm pretty sure it's the exact number. It is the exact number. Great. So 650 million years ago, we divided from fungi into animals. Mm. So if you look at the biological tree of life itself, from the single cell organisms billions of years ago into the multi-cell organisms, into the fungi, into the animals, into humans. We come from the same, it's called abiogenesis. It's the singularity point on earth of where the first cell emerged and then it proliferated into the millions of species that exist today. But that wow. we originate from that same source point, but from that source point, what is more, uh, what is more recent or close to that source point than humans, than, ch than chimps is fungi. So fungi is a decentralized network of intelligence, which mm -hmm. then humans are basically intelligent decentralized network. And that's what the one infinite creator is an intelligent decentralized network. Network, yeah, and so it's just so it's the it's physical a... manifestation of the non physical. And what's cool is that you mentioned we consumed it, right? So there's that like we were acting as a black hole, we consumed it <laughs> at zero point, and then what came from that? There was something that was created from that, which is evolution of the being. Um, wow, so cool! That's so cool. Insight. <laughs> Insights, baby. Insights, uh, baby. Simulation, baby. Simulation, baby. <laughs> Woo. Fire, fire. fire. Um, yeah, I love this. I love this. So, um, do you do you have somewhere that you feel you want to take this? I love the flow of this. It feels so good. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, it feels so Same. rich. Yeah, very organic. I feel a good place for us to chat would be about. Um, no limit society and so for both of us and, and our journeys as well so I feel like we could transition to that um, love it sweet and and it, and just to what we talked about in the first uh, hour or how, how, however long um, I would even encourage you guys 
watching on both of our channels, I would encourage you guys to um, to to rewatch the first hour and to, in a sense, like pause and take some notes along the way. And like, and like, if something came up that we talked about that is like, well, what is abiogenesis? And then you go and you look it up, right? That kind of thing. Um, and then you like research that a bit, or if something came up around entheogens, or if something came up around this event horizon and this comprehension and this creation and the ability to like meditate on that. Um, and or or just shifting more and more away from the object subject and just all of those different things um, to take your time with like processing or comprehending those um, and then reaching out to Zamir and I in the comments um, if you guys have any questions or any insights um, and then we'll we'll jump in and play with you on that. Love that. Mm -hmm. Sweet and then. Yeah, so um, yeah, No Limit Society um, is incredible. It's, it's basically, um, if you take um, like some of the most, like, it's like the Navy SEALs of spirituality. If you, if you yeah, if you take um, like the highest level, like Buddhist um, realized and merge it with the like highest level Vikings that are, that are, um, constitutionalized as actualizing the planet's fullest potential. And you like merge those mm -hmm. two together. And so, um, yeah, the, um, the, the mission is igniting global awakening and we do so by training free agents in, um, in self-realization as well as in self-actualization and, um, there's many different like programs, um, that we offer. We offer meditation mastery, which is a powerful 30 day program, um, to just train yourself in concentration and realization, meditation, conviction. Um, and also, um, in this, basically this ongoing exclusive training program that Bentinho and the team offer. And it's, it's purposely like exclusive. Um, it's purposely like in terms of there being like a barrier to entry, because there's a, there's gotta be like a high level of earnestness and alignment with the mission, even before like joining in the first, you could say cocentric circle, like getting into the first cocentric circle, like even before you move into like proximity in the same geographic, let's say area as the team actualizing the mission, there's like the first barrier, which is just no limit society in general, which is the online ongoing exclusive training experience. And, um, and that's where you begin like understanding like some of the foundational content first and foremost about self-realization, self-actualization, basically the teachings um, which you could say are a distillation of not only this collective, but the cosmos's uh, essence. And of important distinction right there, actually. Yeah. Very. Yeah. Play, go ahead and say that. Uh, and then we'll continue. Why did you pick up on that? Because um, I, I do. Ah, that's, I, I want to think about that. I want to give that or really tune into that because. So the concept of wanderers in the law of one um, resonated with me the moment that I heard it. Um, and I was very careful immediately not to allow that to be an ego point, but to, to say, oh, if that is who I am, then if that is what I'm here to do and, and it feels that way, well, there's got to be some sort of training ground for that um, available. And it, it, like quite literally, that was my thought process. Like there, there's got to be some sort of, because I'm like, I don't know what to do with that information to be real. Like, I don't know what to like, like I didn't at that point when I discovered the concept of wonders. Um, although I, I did in a sense have the pointings of the law of one teachings that I started to dive into at the point there at that point so there was that was very helpful but um i think the distinction there um that i that i was excited about 
was just the fact that it, that that these materials that I was coming to learn about that they led me to somewhere where there was the possibility of expansion within um, you know those concepts. So like Abraham Hicks, um, Law of One teachings, Bashar. And, and taking it to the and like really dissecting it and taking these concepts and ideas and also, you know, sages and mystics like Nisargadatta, um, uh, Ramana Maharshi, and, and uh, he's, it's cool right now, uh, Ben's really loving Neville Goddard. Um, and, and it's so vast, you know, like there is no, it's, it's not about the individuals at all. It's about the pointings that we get and, and the pointings are all relevant. Right. And so there's, there's a distillation of it in NLS that, that excites me um, a lot. So that was what nice. I was, uh, I guess. Yeah. yeah. That's the same that I was picking up on the distinction cool. between like the collectives um, like religions and between what's going on on the cosmological the level of cosmological teachings. Um, so coming from, yeah, coming from the universal teachings of potentially advanced civilizations and entities that are superior in terms of progress to this collective and taking those teachings and merging them with the, the, this collective's best stuff. So that's nice. basically what we mean. And then, um, then there's so many great, um, within No Limit Society, once you sort of go through like the orientational content, the foundational content, then you get added into a system called Ketas, which are a place for you to do the work. It's a place for you to integrate the teachings with uh, about 20 others in these each, um, in these Ketas, which are basically Sanskrit word for house or abode. And you have uh, like Keta guides, which Zamir and I are both Keta guides. And so these are people that have sort of went through doing the work and have went through the process of purifying where they're coming from and tuning in more and more into the shepherding consciousness, where you're coming from a place that's most interested in the process of the 20 people that are in your mm -hmm. Keta. And so you yes. want to serve them as best as possible, to ask them good questions, to have them tune into their process, to wake up more, to purify themselves, et cetera. And so that Keta process happens. And then there's, you know, there's a more, you could say, um, exclusive, even more than NLS is another, you could say, more exclusive ring, which is generally just Bentinho and the core team and what's forming more and more as like an extended team that's expanding more and more. And that this is really the, you could, you could view it as like the sun, right? This is the sun. And then you have like Mercury and you have Venus. And so this is sort of like the mm. core, the core team. And then the, and then the extended team. And then earth is like sort of where people are shifting from more and more <laughs> into, you know, seeing as God sees more and more into being aligned, constituted as just the mission. And so we have all mm. these great analogies that help people. Like when they jump from, from earth to being interested in the teachings, that's like them shifting more and more to Venus. Um, they're like, yeah. in, they're like in the spaceship. You can teleport. Yeah. 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 yeah, teleport. yeah or yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> Quantum leap. Yeah. Teleport. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, baby. Nice. So that's, yeah. No limit society in a nutshell, um, which I've been a part of for almost a year now. And Zamir, what are you on? How many months now? Um, since the meditation mastery, so five months, is it four exactly. or five months? I was going to say, yeah, almost half a year as well. Dude, um, yeah. And so, yeah, so we would love also, if you guys, um, enjoyed what we just shared, you can check out the links in both of the video bios on both of our channels. We'll have no limit society link down there and you guys can join. Um, and just if this resonates with you, because this is like, there's no place, there's no place like this on earth where the, the priority is the spiritual Navy SEAL is like the priority is being a Buddhist Viking. It's like there's coming from the future, which is like, it's like coming from 2035, where this whole civilization is already 
enlightened and prosperous and abundant and then just basically retracing our steps and like reverse engineering that process in our in our daily um creation and um and purifying ourselves in the process yes um of all of that which is which is really actually something this is a beautiful thread to to go off on actually in our own experience with sorry did i cut i you go you off or did you okay so when like i i love the the um idea of like ascended masters which to me is you know uh it's like someone who has mastered manifestation or creation and has ascended you know they've they've they're ascended masters so it's it's like width and height i guess you could say for is how i kind of view it Mm -hmm. um and so like I, that's what this feels like nls feels like a training grounds for that becoming an ascended master and and not only that but also you know um the service to others component of it so it was you know it's the national i would say the um uh focus of the whole training ground creating ketas groups where we can we can interact with each other and um and if, if eventually it resonates with you, you can become a guide or you, you, you want to step into that level of service. That's there's an opportunity to become a Keta guide and then learn from that side of the spectrum um, or that, that part of the experience. So there's so much available within this. I'm not sure if I said what I wanted to say, <laughs> but there was, Oh, so yeah. Okay. So, so essentially what I wanted to maybe give people an insight into is the, the like how is this showing up for you in your own journey right now like at this moment like how how are how is this mechanism really um and maybe you can just talk about your own experience or a shift that you're going through right now yes, and then perfect. it'll it'll organically come up you know how it's been a part of that uh, but i think that would be a powerful testimonial also just to share nice with people. bro Totally. And then um, same thing right back at you afterward. Um, Love it. And that'll be probably a a good place to wrap. Um, Yeah. So. Yeah, for me um, right now, going through the experience of. Like at the at the causal level. just going so deeply and subtly into that, which you could say is like where you're coming from, where I'm coming from. And at that like seed level, again, like we said, seed theory, right? At that causal level, seeing where my my core limiting belief or my core assumption is that, mm. is that I am unwhole. And so then from, from that core limiting belief assumption is then the, the manifestation in the, in the mind, the subtle, as well as then in the physical of then uh, wanting to get something to feel whole. So wanting to get like a validation, um, wanting to be like seen as a teacher, um, just and and it doesn't and it doesn't feel good and like there's there's like it's being reflected and it it feels way better it doesn't feel good because it doesn't feel um whole it still feel it felt unwhole and then it's getting reflected and in that process like the investigation or the inquiry like retracing all the way to that causal level and investigating like what were my assumptions like in my childhood and in my life, like growing up without a dad? Mm. Wow. Yep. And so then there's an automatic assumption of like my picture of being raised by just my mom does not fit the classic picture of all my friends that I go and hang out with where it's mom and dad and a brother or sister, whatever. And And then just really healing that, like really just shining the light of Mm. awareness, love, light on that, at that causal level. 
and seeing how the I am, that awareness love light is prior to that causal level and just mm -hmm. really bringing that forth into illumination. And then just naturally there's a transmutation at the causal level of the I am unwholeness to I am whole. And then I am whole gets to express itself more and more into the mind and into the physical. And, and it feels just a lot more light. Um, and so that's, that's what I would say my core right now of my experience of what I'm going through. And it's because of this container, like it's because of Bentinho, it's because of the team, it's because of, you got to just take it from the understanding that after like 15 years of studying, like you talked about ascended masters after 15 years of studying the patterns of how consciousness expresses itself, um, and understanding the nature, there's just the level of, of mastery that is present in the field and that is able to really tune into things that are this subtle and, and shepherd other selves to tune into things this subtle and then to purify where they're coming from and serve the mission at a more actualized highest possible level. So that's on my end. And do you feel like commenting on that? Dude, before so sharing? good. It's so good. Yeah, because I, I resonate with it. One, uh, that's it's uh, I think we're at very similar. Uh, at least it looks in it, like it felt the same as what you were describing um, where where it is. You know, I think on the journey, what's what's really cool about NLS and uh, this is what I'll say um, in response to that on the having the container of NLS and having the reflections be made available to you and, and also being trained to spot the subtleties. Like we're being trained to, we've been, we've, we've been trained and we're continually being trained to, to like our attention is being brought back to the subtleties. Why? To desensitize, I feel, um, ourselves not and when i say desensitize i, I kind of mean it in a reverse way where it's like not like to not be so reactive to rather to allow yourself to be just present with your shit and and allow yourself to see the fruits of what happens when you do that and when you allow yourself to go there and see how indestructible you are you said something a long time ago to me uh, on a, actually, I think it was a Keda guide training call where you said it in there where safety equals indestructibility. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what's being shown to us and as individuals in this container. And it, with each individual experience, I hear it from, from each person as well, you know, their own experience. Like they always come to this realize, ah, oh, and I realized I can't be touched by that. It's a, a what's that? In a course of miracles, nothing real can be threatened. Um, nothing unreal exists. That's one of my favorite. I haven't even hopped into the course of miracles, but like read that and and got started. Like it, it got. I. It's funny. I discovered that saying before I discovered a course of miracles. Nothing real can be threatened. Nothing unreal exists. And at a certain point, I thought that I came up with it on my own. <laughs> <laughs> which is really funny because I was saying it uh, anyways. And then I discovered of course in miracles. And I was like, it came from somewhere. Um, <laughs> so in a sense I did. Um, but yeah, so, so that's, what's, what's kind of unique about this container is the, the opportunity to really do the seeking work um in a way where you're supported by other individuals who are going through their own processes and their own things. And also in a way that doesn't, um, I, I really like that it's not hippie ish, you know? And, and I think that there is a sense of, um, uh, of knowing why we're not doing it that way. Um, that, that has been clearly, um, conveyed to each member of nls why like that that hippie-ish way of approaching it and and i don't mean this in a way of judgment of hippies for the record uh what this is is more of a pointing to a maturity in the balance of love and wisdom and um 
I'm, I'm not sure if I should. I feel like that's a really great, like big subject mm-hmm. that we could go into. I don't want to go like down that rabbit hole just yet. It's a good uh, point. That's important. That's good that you mentioned. And then also just to briefly clarify, um, in that Keta guides call, I remember the context of it. It was it was somebody in a Keta had um, arose the experience of unsafety. And nice. then, yeah. yeah, and then um, Corey uh, brought up that, like, to reflect on, like, where is the unsafety? And Bentinho does this a lot, too, but show me some of the unsafety. Give me a little nice. piece of it. Um, and then Corey said that line that the only true real safety is absolute indestructibility. And that's yes. just so, so good. Yeah. Safety equals indestructibility. Um, and that's, that's a good one. So there's the context for that. So basically we have profound little nuggets that are shared like that. And, um, and so now I would like to do, yeah, your, um, your experience as well, if you feel like it's good timing for that, and then we can wrap. Perfect. Cool. I love it. I, um, so if I feel into my experience, it's right now in this moment, because that's all there really is. Um, I, I definitely f- feel like a shift has already occurred in terms of um, where I feel myself coming from nowadays and today even. Um, there's There's been this process that we've been undergoing in NLS where we're, we're coming from the end result, essentially. And I feel that for some time, in this process, there was a lot of confusion between my old self and the self that I was becoming because there was parts of the old self that just could not survive in this new version of self that I'm creating myself to be self actualizing myself as. Um, And so similar to what you were saying, where it's like, my process kind of has been looking like and is continuing to look like this this going to the root like i i did i never thought of it in the way that you mentioned it which is the causal layer but there was there was a process that i went through um actually while i had covid about a week and a half ago and i i felt like because nothing real can be threatened and nothing unreal exists that i was already vibrationally feeling pretty low so i was already um in the vicinity of those lower thought forms. So it was a perfect environment for shadow work to occur. And my conviction was such that um, I, I didn't, uh, I didn't uh, feel like it would drag me down further. Rather, it was just a really like great condition and perfect point for me to do the work. And when I when I did it, um, I went through this kind of loop like kind of reversed, I, re- I went backwards in time it, in, in, into myself, if that makes sense. And, and this is all imaginary, I guess you could say. And to myself as a child and, you know, to my, and even beyond that. So like myself as like just coming into existence and then what manifested out of that. And, and I, and I, and I went with the preconceived notion, by the way, I, I, that all is creation and that i have created the world that i live in the this earth that i live on i created it so i went with that as like my kind of my um intuitive birthing point i guess you could say of this experience and so when i did that i felt um i I felt a lot of deep pain in uh, like that the that, that our world is in and I, I was like, well, my judgments of this world are what have created my experience of this world. I know that. So if I can, if I can come from a place of acceptance and, and say that I am all of this, like all of this trauma that I'm observing right now, like I am that. So I am. And, and I started going through, like I wrote out a list and like I let myself get really angry and I let myself get like really um just all these things that i don't normally exhibit like all these emotions that i would normally not because i just don't see a point in it really it's not that i'm suppressing it i just don't 
want to, but I was like, well, let me go there then. If I'm so, if I feel like I'm so comfortable with, let me actually go there and allowed myself to. And, and some of the things that I wrote out were, I am a murderer. I am, uh, and, and, you know, there were these, these individuals in society that I would maybe have a judgment towards that I could come to in this experience, in that time frame of this process to actually have a genuine love and acceptance for regardless and see them as creator, not in approval of the acts or actions, but so, so there was this, this clean separation that, that occurred in that process for me um of and this this is this is where the juice is i think in my process right now was through that i was able to see how i am how my judgment of myself has been creating this unworthiness to be to exist at all like i have this judgment of myself as being or i had this judgment of myself as being less than her. so on the other end murderer is on one end of the spectrum and then the other end of the spectrum is um i don't know like people who i look up to and um who who i see as very enlightened beings you know things like that and like comparing myself to them and uh things like that so that so like two ends of the spectrum in my human experience that i wanted to actually just go through and say i am all of that I am so so I allowed myself to go there. But what I realized in that was that I am um, that that it was okay to act like I felt the relaxation happen, that kind of just uh, completion in that moment, where it was like, I feel like ah, I can actually sense that it's there. And therefore, it exists. And therefore, I have access to it. And therefore, and therefore, and therefore, and therefore, and, therefore, and it started becoming more of a possibility, whatever it is. But th like that, that I think it's just deep inner acceptance that just started to just, it's been growing consistently um, every day. And I have access to that now. And it's, it's really beautiful because, uh, you know, I've had layers of that in the past, but I think there was a traumatic experience that I locked myself down in from like experiencing that. And this was a relationship that I entered that I allowed myself to, like, I was, it's pretty arrogant in a sense that I was trying to awaken somebody who did not want to be awakened. Right. And I was convinced that I could, cause I, I everything I was touching at that time was turned into gold. So of course I'm like, I, I can, yeah, absolutely. I can do God's work, you know, but I didn't have the wisdom to understand when somebody does want to, and when somebody does not want to be awakened. Um, so, so that caused, you know, quite a karmic loop for myself and I locked myself down and I stopped trusting myself. Um, and because there was like this self betrayal in the process sexually as well in the relationship where I was, I knew I shouldn't be in it anymore, but I stayed in it because the sex was so great and, um, things like that. So there was, so even that was like a point of acceptance along that spectrum was like, I'm a sexual deviant, you know, like like really letting myself accept that. And, and even if I'm not expressing it right now, but to accept that and say, I am that so that I don't have that judgment present has changed my perception of the world. Um, and people who I interact with, with this real, like there's a real layer of non-judgment that's present now that was not there. And I'm not saying it's flawless. I still have judgments, but there is this beautiful, beautiful, like, backing of just love there that um that nls has given me access to in terms of the tools and techniques and the teachings um that in the space holding you know these containers and just seeing people go through their process talking to somebody like you and hearing you be vulnerable allows me to be vulnerable um and so it's the power of group work, you know, I, I did, we're coming full circle here, because I did say, I, I um, had a hard time with group work earlier on. And now I just feel like, fuck, this is awesome. Like, this is so good. It's so good. And yes, the individual work still gets to happen. But for some reason, I made that mutually exclusive in my mind entering into the container. Because, Well, I would say it's a 
fear of intimacy that created that experience. But then once you you really get around people, you know, in NLS, um, you you come to see like, dude, everyone's here for the same reason. They all just want to know themselves as creator and accept themselves. And then, as you say, express yourself as is that what's that from? Know yourself, accept yeah. yourself. It's in your bio. Yeah, know yourself, uh, accept yourself, become the creator. The three steps yes. that Ra communicates in the law of one. Yeah. And that's it. And that's, you know, that's why we do these processes. I'm sure to to somebody who's never heard of this stuff, that's like, why the fuck would you call yourself a murderer? And why would you sit in, you know, I look I like to I like to see it from from that lens too. And and just anyways. Um beautiful. it's cool. It's it's really, it's really um, beautiful. Yeah, is the word. Thank you. Yeah, it is. And you sharing your healing and your uh, deepening of accepting who you are and you sharing how now by doing that process, everything up until this point was just this most beautiful, precious fuel for the flower blossoming. And now like the aroma nice. is like the illumination. And so now mm. you're, you're emanating more and more. And then that's where the shepherding gets to actualize itself. And that's where um, the true freedom is found in that, where um, the, there's nothing more beautiful we could say than when um other self feels contracted seeking um freedom and then um we 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 um we shepherd through our own illumination through our own transmutation um and then they also get um to transmute and to illumine um to shift from a more contracted to a more um boundless free energy yeah love it love it dude that was poetry love those, you yeah so. i love you too love man you so much this is really i love you too brother i can't wait to give you a big hug <laughs> <laughs> so exciting. oh man so, so good yeah what a rock together dude yeah this was epic um almost makes me want to start like a a podcast with you and interview like grow the you know what i mean like oh the, shit. The <laughs> yeah we've had we've had a lot of uh um expressions of that like uh you know like rome and corey um with the light touch and uh sort of nice. like tuning into like the actualization of that and like just um obviously both of us now uh you know tuning into interviewing more people in nls and stuff so yeah. so um who knows there may be some uh some juicy little uh some co-hosty stuff that might yeah. that's, that's pretty cute um so yeah so who knows the little uh the the what uh the the you have uh the the Romay and Corey, and then who knows, maybe the Zamir and Atlas, and and, and then just maybe we have a Exciting. conversation with the four and like bring people into that as well. So there's all these great mixes uh, of that as well. And so that's the power when we come together, like within No Limit Society, um. we can move mountains together. We can actualize Shambhala growing from the hundreds into the thousands, into the millions of people just fully awake, actualized, prosperous, and just an ongoing birthday party. Um, Boom. Yeah. Oh, that's you so know, good. That's from Kanye that. West. That's from Kanye West. So because, yeah, really? because, <laughs> because when he ran in 2020, he said, I want to call my party the birthday party. Every day uh -huh. should be a birthday. <laughs> Every day should be Dang. that celebration on earth, you know? That's my interpretation of the birthday party. And so um, why the Dude. fuck not? And it already is for so many people that are tuned into nature. Um, but the stress and the anxiety and the depression and the separation, that's not um, where we're heading. So um, yeah, bro. So much Yeah, love. there's a lot of... Oh, man, I love you too, bud. And th there's so much... 
that uh, to to the to the I just want to make this point because it felt relevant with what you just said to the point of the stress and anxiety and all that because there's there's sure to be people who watch this who have experienced that or which is or still God which is important which is right? still, God. still God yeah it's God yes, appearing yeah. as anxiety and depression for us yes totally totally and it's being it's it's currently naturally being transmuted so a lot of you know yes. your guys's processes out there um may also not be yours actually none of it is yours to uh, to to really put it truthfully um in the first place so i don't know I, I felt like there might be some solace found in that that you know also take it take it easy on yourself and give yourself the love that you deserve you are a um loving and loved being and you're more than capable of you know every single um growth opportunity that lies ahead of you and if you do feel called nls is a great great place to not only meet that bar but to exceed it and to give that to others as well um so just wanted to yeah, share baby. that beautiful and so find the no limit society links in the bio also on simulation you can find the links to all of zamir's all of zamir's insights as well as his uh his, 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 his instagram his website you can check out all those links on simulation and then on mm -hmm. insights you can find my links as well um and also we would love for you guys to subscribe to our youtube channels um if you haven't yet also um like the videos on the channels mm -hmm. that helps uprank them in the algorithm um comment below with your thoughts on the episode also share the video if the video made a profound influence on you share it with other people that you feel like it would profoundly move and let's get the word out baby um beautiful and infinite love to you guys fam thank you yeah big love to you guys and uh i love you buddy i can't uh this was awesome this is so good so good thank so you man good. so thank good you. cool so good bro it's a the beginning of a beautiful flowering creation together so Very yes good. yes i feel it Cool. Bye, guys. Love you. Bye, guys. Take care.